farming has historically been associated with something like artificial anyway it's cultivation it's setting something apart from the natural wild world of hunter-gatherer societies and today it's it, it i mean it's associated with factory farming and monoculture systems and those provide efficiencies that have economic reward and that's why we're using a lot of them today um, but amongst farmers there's an increasing understanding that we have to look at complex systems uh, monocultures aren't always a good idea and especially in soil fertility the advent of of low-till and no-till cultivation is one aspect of that and the just the consumer demands for more natural systems has been actually giving us an economic means to try and break out of that monoculture and factory farming system. Um, we talk about intelligence. I have a particular view of intelligence as, um, so artificial intelligence is what's not natural. And, natural intelligence is built into the world. Um, we've got a lot of physics or kind of intelligence, the, the emergent patterns in chemistry and biology are based on this intelligence. And then within humans, um, it's typically associated with uh, what I would say is associated with conscious processes. I mean, amongst the systems that we have created, they've all been created within conscious minds. And then we implement things that can be carried out through without current consciousness present. Um, as a farmer, I mean, I, I see this boundary quite clearly just in monotonous tasks. I mean, I do it. I'm, I mean, I'm not conscious all the way when I'm doing my job. If I'm doing something monotonous, I'm my mind's going someplace else and my body's just doing its thing, running up and down the rows. And I think it's important to recognize that there's a boundary between this built-in programmed intelligence, even in our human system, versus what it takes consciousness for. So we, we use our natural intelligence to build artificial intelligence, but our consciousness is incorporated by design into these artificial systems. Right. So there's a pretty good Wikipedia page that covers different ideas on robotics. Uh, they've got different. I mostly just wanted to share some different resources. Uh, they've got, I mean, in this valley, we've got an automatic milking machine, basically. The cows know how to go. The cows are on automatic. They, they know the routine. They walk in, they get on this merry-go-round. The, they have people actually sanitizing the milking equipment, but uh, it, it's all just automatic. And th there's lots of different ways you can use automation to minimize labor in agriculture. And there's lots of incentive to do so. In, in general, agriculture has been leading tech applications just because there's so much economic incentive to do it. There used to be half the population work or 80% of it worked in agriculture. Now it's 2%, probably going towards 1%. Uh, Bear, for instance, is trying to market data services and and they've got a, a whole program designed to try and make money on precision farming for the most part. Uh, there's another one that I've going to consumer electronics show the last couple times Blue River's been there John Deere bought them out and they're doing their best to commercialize AI driven 
targeted spraying systems that use chemicals like Roundup to target weeds specifically and conserve the chemicals or ideally my point of view is this should be done probably with mechanical or something non-chemical but they're using the AI primarily to identify and differentiate different plant species so that they can target the cultivation. One thing that I've come across in my own uh, just operation is that a lot of times there'll be different vibration modes in machinery that's going haywire. And so this, this article is about industrial applications for basically distributed AI that's looking at things out in the field. But then if you do a two level system where you've got a, a, an internet of things type AI process working remotely on specific devices and then a centralized AI that's processing and identifying and because like once you have a failure then you can look at what were the precursor signals up to that failure and and then going forward that's basically a training system to train for in advance of having failures so that you can take corrective action before you actually have the breakdown. And this one, this article is specifically about, or the, this site's trying to sell it for refineries, but works the same for agricultural systems. And that's one that I'm really interested in because it's cost me lots of money having failures that could have been predicted with the, just vibration sensors and monitoring and the right kind of AI system built into it. They're incorporating autonomous systems as drones to go through the, basically do surveillance and collect data for precision farming. So they can create maps and then that's integrated with the application of uh, herbicides or fertilizer or anyway, you can use basically just optical sensors to collect imaging data that can differentiate plant stress versus uh, wetlands and, and low fertility areas based on plant stress and physiology that, that can be seen through optical imaging for the most part. And so these are all different extended articles that can be read. We've got a slideshow here on that one. But anyway, a lot of it's marketing, but it's in the world and farmers are using it right now, big time, especially in the plains, not so much in Utah. So I was hoping some of this could be about discussion. <laughs> I mean, this is supposed to be just a, a room to do interactive discussions in. and and maybe jeff you might have questions for you too are you open to having questions yeah i'm just i was really hoping that we could have some discussion in the deal rather than just have a straightforward presentation does anybody have any questions curiosities so i had kind of i i, I got a little bit of a sneak preview um, of your talk because I got to, I got to help kind of screen some of the talks for the conference. Um, so um, I'm curious, in addition to all of these um, kind of really big picture things, you mentioned something like an eventual replacement for pesticide. Um, where That's the Blue River know. one. Can we do it? The Blue River system's doing plant recognition and targeting chemicals, but um, that same system could be used for other other interventions rather than pesticides. It could be mechanical, um, is the most obvious one, or at least really tightly targeting pesticide applications. There's some other work being done on basically autonomous 
robots that would use the same kind of plant recognition technology to just wander around like the room, but I does and and we you know specifically mechanically destroy invasive plants. And so how do you see your role as a farmer changing? Because it sounds like in the next, I don't know, 50 years or so, suddenly a farmer will have to be an engineer or, or someone who works in robotics or AI. I mean, the farmers around here are using drones to, to do regular things that need to be done. Uh, works out really good on canal maintenance issues uh, they have programmable drones that you, you can basically set them up to go spray an area and they'll carry out the task on their own and but by using we're conserving resources by doing precision farming and that's already been implemented fairly large scale but at the edge of things, it's mostly b being done by mom and pop type deals is building just robots that can do plant identification and, and, and targeted tasks. Some of it could be harvesting crops, uh, weed control, cult you know, cultivation. Uh, what, one place where they're trying to save money on labor is just the harvest and having automated systems for picking fruit or harvesting vegetables that need pretty intense analysis of image information to do the task manipulators and then once you get in once after that then there's also there's processing and sorting facilities where they've already implemented automated technology to do that, but. And then is there kind of a trajectory, like a time frame that you would predict? Like, could you prophesy when you think some of the major transitions will happen or what those transitions will look like? I mean, the, the spraying parts, I mean, they've got commercial units out there now, and it's just a question of what crops they've set up the systems for, because it's, the training parts and then implementing it with enough processor speed to do it real time but it's a question of velocity that they can do it so they're doing pretty good up to five miles an hour on targeting weeds with selective spraying and they'd like to get it up to 10 miles per hour and, and they might can do that already on very specific weeds and crops but they've been focusing on a few things like soybeans and corn and cotton because they've got to identify both the, the, the desired plant and target weeds in the deal. So, uh, this may not be your area of expertise, but um, I've seen a lot of stuff about indoor farming and using AI to control like chemical levels of specific nutrition and stuff like that for hydroponics. Do you right. see that as becoming a large scale viable thing and maybe out replacing, you know, using the land or? I think as we resources become scarcer, that especially for some high, the you know, short life cycle, high intensity things like fresh leaf vegetables, so that, that that'll become practical. They, they had a, <laughs> at the Consumer Electronics Show, they had a, a half-size uh, con cargo container that they were trying to sell that had an automated system in it. The whole thing's automated, uh, except that for planting it and harvesting it. Which, to me, it's not, I mean, it does all the nutrition, environmental factors for growing, but it still has to be done by hand as far as the planting and and harvesting. And they were saying it could produce five tons of produce a year from this half size container and they were wanting to sell them for about hundred thousand dollars a unit and i'm not sure if that's going to pan out in the budget today but that was a korean company selling those 
tried to sell those. I don't know if they've sold them or not. Thanks, everybody.